how am I supposed to study for maths? Now, I know that this says start now. It'd be much less overwhelming if you do some groundwork early on. But I say start now because even though you're, you know, well into year 12 and you're about to finish or you're finishing term two, there's still a lot of work you can do now that will save you a lot of time when you get to trials later on. It's not a case of you should have started six months ago. It's a case of what can you do now? It'll, it's much, much less overwhelming if you do some of the groundwork for your trials and for your HSC now by creating summary sheets, by doing practice questions, by doing um, chapter reviews, by doing practice exams now, rather than just learning content and then banking on all that content coming back to you in, you know, two months, three months from now when you start to do practices for your trials. So starting now via the next step is very important given the next step is to keep a rule book or to write summary pages. So you need some form of note taking in maths. Note taking in maths is definitely a bit of a um, kind of it depends question. It depends how you work. I would recommend you do need some form of notes, I would say, very, very minimal. And all it really needs to be, in my opinion, is a summary page or a summary sheet that has the formulas on it that you need and the key diagrams and information that you're required to answer questions. So you don't need to write very extensive notes about how to answer questions or step number one, find this, step number two. If that works for you, that's great. You just need something that will help you answer questions while you're practicing. Now, I wanna make you guys aware that when you sit the HSC, hopefully you know this by now, this piece of paper will be put on your desk next year exam. It is the um, reference sheet, they call it. It's also, you could call it a summary sheet or a formula sheet and it has, um, three different sections, financial, measurement, and statistics. Um, there's no need for anything networks or um, algebra related. And it gives you um, three different sections that have formulas or references on them. So you have a bunch of different stuff in there. Does this constitute your notes? No, you need to be doing more than this when it comes to note taking and it comes to remembering formulas. I apologize, <laughs> my cat's going a bit mental. I'm just trying to, she'll be good. Um, so you can't just rely on this to be your summary sheet. You will have to write your own formulas and your own practice to use in your own time. You can't just use this when you're practicing because it doesn't have everything on it. Another important note that I wanna reference about this sheet is that if you take a look at a lot of the things like the formulas um, or your trigonometry formulas, they're not actually telling you what they are. They're not actually saying, okay, where it says A equals theta over 360 times pi r squared, it doesn't actually tell you what that area is. You need to know that that's the area of a sector of a circle. So it's very important that you guys understand this stuff in a way that is not just reliant on you having this sheet in your exam, if that makes sense. The next thing that I would say is to make sure that you figure out what you need help with and target it. So you need to make sure that you spend time on things that you're struggling with, but don't disregard everything else. Now, this means that if you get an exam back and you lose a certain amount of marks in a certain section, you need to make sure that that section, if you lose 10 marks in the algebra section and you've lost two marks in the statistics section, yes, you need to revise statistics at some point, but you need to focus on that section, which I think I just said was algebra, a little bit more than the statistics. Now, I know that they say you need to break down all of your subjects and have them all be equal, which is true in a sense, but you need to make sure that inside of maths, you're not giving exactly equal time to the five units just because there's five units. You need to be giving time to the ones that you're struggling with the most. Now, I kind of have a bit of a story about this where because I um, found simultaneous linear equations quite easy and I understood them quite well, I would do them more often than things that I struggled with, like bearings or trig, because I found them quite satisfying and I knew that I was going to get 80 to 90% every time I practiced them. And that was like a good kind of um, motivation for me because I was like, um, oh, okay, well, I'm getting good marks. Like this proves that my studying's working, blah, blah, blah. But I was ignoring pieces of content that I knew that I didn't know how to do. And I knew that I was going to lose marks on in the exam. So it's very important that what, when you figure out what you need help with, that becomes the target of your revision. It's also important that the revision is active and not passive. So what I mean by that is that there's kind of two types of revision, active revision and passive revision. 
So active revision is revision that actively targets the content and is an active form of addressing it. So reading your textbook is passive revision because you're just passively engaging with the content. Active revision will be keeping a rule book, making a summary page, doing a practice exam, doing a chapter review, something like that. So it's important that you have active revision on the things that you need to target. Another thing I would add here is that there's always going to be someone who can help you. Number one, your teachers are literally being paid to help you. So please ask them questions. They're paid to answer your questions. Um, if you aren't finding that that's helpful enough, go to other teachers that are at your school. Go to your friends and your classmates and see if they understand the piece of content. Check out our resources. See if tutoring is the right option for you. It could be that you need private tutoring or you need to engage in a class model or you need to engage with some of our summary sheets or our notes. And then always you could Google, use YouTube, find videos online, find resources from people, find practice exams that have solutions. There's always going to be something that can help you understand a piece of content. This next one is a bit interesting in terms of how to apply it. When I say study with friends, it's very much, again, it's, it depends if this works for you or not. The first way I would recommend studying with friends is actually not in person. I would recommend studying with friends over FaceTime or over a video call. Number one, it's less easy to get distracted because a lot of the things that create distractions when you're actually with friends are when they go like, oh my God, look at this, or um, you see something and you're talking about the same thing you're together or you're outside, you're at the library and there's a lot of things around you to stimulate you. When you're at home sitting at your desk in your familiar environment and they're just on FaceTime, it more acts as a kind of um, model of you're both focusing, you're both working and you're keeping each other accountable. And it's, there's less, it's less exciting basically. Whereas if you go and study at a library and you bring a whole friend group, there's let's go get food, let's go walk around, let's go talk to the people we know, let's go outside and it turns into a more distracting environment. It doesn't mean it can't work. I'm just saying when you study with friends, you do need to have kind of a disciplined you know, approach to it where you can't just say every time you're going to go study, I'm going to go study with friends and then you get nothing done. Again, it's your prerogative. Do what you want. That's my advice on that. The last thing I would say is please take care of yourself. These next few months are really going to be intense academically, but it's very important that you don't neglect your mental and physical health at the same time, because if those two suffer, your understanding of the content and your ability to take in the content and apply it to exams will suffer as well. So it's very important that those things kind of strike a balance. Again, that's very difficult to achieve. Um, and it's very much easier said than done, but it's advice that I would say is honestly of the list of six things that I put on this slide, it is the most important. Again, easier said than done. Feel free to ask questions in the chat about how you think that's best applied, but that would be the piece of advice I would say is the most valuable.